right? We can't forgive if it's sin and it's open outright sin. We can't forgive it. And yet, somehow, our universities, our hospitals, uh, people are buying into it big time. Now, I'm going to show you something. Here's an article written in 2012 where it shows La Sierra University would not affirm the LGBTQ, citing it would be against Ad Adventist beliefs according to the Bible. That's good, right? That was 2012. Now let me fast forward to you to 2023. Not only did the university administration affirm, put it up on the screen, thank you, affirm LGBTQ students, but gave them a special, special lavender graduation service, as they call it, this past Sabbath of, of all days, and in the church. Now, do you think this event went, unno went unnoticed by heaven? Can you imagine in one of our schools, they had a special LGBTQ graduation, transgenders, the whole business, in the church on Sabbath. Now, our health system's already shown their acceptance and support publicly, including paving the way to the hiring of transgenders to serve in high positions in the SDA health system. Now, Pacific Union College, they openly affirm LGBTQ. And most of our colleges affirm LGBTQ clubs on campus. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think they would affirm an adulterer's club on campus? No. I mean, I've got to keep going back to this, folks, because we've got to say, where in the world is the common sense, right? Do you think that maybe they would affirm an alcoholics club on campus? No. You guessed it. I don't think so either. Now, I'm convinced that Seventh-day Adventists who are silent on these topics are just as guilty, just as guilty as the ones promoting it. Now, does all of this seem like a bad dream or nightmare to any of you besides me? I mean, it really does. I can't wrap my mind around the fact that people who know the Bible so well would willfully compromise their biblical beliefs because of government funding and accreditation. No, no, they're, no, they're not deceived, just compromised. Right? Can you imagine trying to explain all of this to God on Judgment Day, hoping that you get a heavenly pass? It's, it's not going to work. I'm sure some of you are still asking, okay, why is he so focused on the open sin of the LGBTQ community? And it's a very good question. All right? I'll answer that in a second, but let me first ask you, I'll ask you, can you think of any other organized group that's so powerful and influential that the U.S. government would change a number of their laws to appease them? And a group so powerful that the American Psychiatric Association would change their diagnosis from mental illness to complete affirmation, again, that word, without any science to back it? Now, come on. They always want to talk about science, right? All these organizations, but they don't want it when it comes to a, a boy's a boy and a girl's a girl and, and who can be a mother and all of this type of stuff, suddenly they want to throw science out the window. This community has also made tremendous roads into the Christian church, including the SDA church, while rebelling against the seventh commandment of the living God. The most powerful group that I know that is impacting the church big time today is the LGBTQ group. Now, let me be clear, again, if they lived their lives separately without bringing their junk into the church and without us trying to, right? If they, let me say it again, I want to be kind about it. I started to say bring their junk, and I think I already did. I shouldn't probably say that. But bring their beliefs into the church and, and without trying to force their beliefs on the Christian church, I'd not be preaching this sermon. There'd be no need. People can live the way they want to live. We, it's not our job to judge them. We'll, we're going to get to that in just a minute. I'm more excited about that than the rest of the sermon so far. I'm still looking at the clock. I'm, I know what's going on here. Let me see the time. Okay. We got, we got a little while to go. Now, all of that said, they can march and protest and openly celebrate Pride Month. Someone said to me here at camp meeting, they give Mother's Day one day a year, they give Father's Day one day a year, and they give the pride, the LGBTQ, a whole month. They call it Pride Month. Well, let me ask you, where does the word pride come from? You're correct, right? 
and they can build a coalition of supporters and connect themselves with the civil rights movement, even influence our public schools to promote their ungodly agenda to our young children, as young as the second and third grades. I think we may have a picture. There's some books. Some of the, these are Christian books, Queerfully and Wonderfully Made, Happy Pride Month, Still Stacy. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of books that are now written by LGBTQ Christians who are promoting these into the churches. I mean, that's why I said a while ago, I don't think most of us know how progressive this is, and this is a wake-up call. So it's okay, I'll take the blame. Um, uh, if I have to go somewhere for a while, maybe the Bahamas would be good. I'll go, <laughs> go to there afterwards pretty quickly. But all of this said, all of the, the progression that they've made does not impress God one iota or change His Ten Commandment law. He cannot and will not change it for you or me or the LGBTQ movement or anyone else. Now, in 2015, with the help of then President Barack Obama, same-sex marriage was instituted by the federal government of the United States of America to become law of the land. And with all of that, with all their earthly successes for promoting their lifestyle and agenda, they cannot, I'm going to say it again, they cannot, and I emphasize, change one jot or tittle of God's law. Amen. Is that clear? Amen. God will not allow... God will not allow sin or sinners in rebellion to His law to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So please listen closely. We're not talking about a group who stumble and fall from time to time and, and, and then come back to the foot of the cross. No. We're talking about a group who denies they're living in sin, and they want you and me to buy into it. They're bringing their junk into the church, right? I'm doing it again. So therefore, there's no need to ask Jesus to forgive them of their sins, and guess what? As I already said, they have every right to believe what they want to about sin, but we as a church cannot allow deception to chip away at the law of God. Are we together on that? We Christians have committed to uphold the law of God. 